Hello everybody and welcome to Andromeda's Amusement Academy. Uh, this is the 17th edition of our stream here and today we are looking at vertical lift hills. Uh, if this is your first time to one of these streams, I welcome in. Uh, this is Andromeda's Amusement Academy. I am a real life theme park designer uh, who uh, likes to play RCT. And uh, further to that, I like to build realistic roller coasters in RCT. So I teach how to do that. So each week we pick a topic and build nine different roller coasters that uh, surround that topic. And also, you know, maybe some extras here and there as, as we go along. So today's topic is vertical lift hills. Uh, there's actually a fair amount of stuff to choose from as far as this goes and some weird stuff like the uh, chance toboggan or, uh, you know, some of the Chinese variants of that. Um, I went with maybe a little more normal coasters this time around. Um, we actually have a couple of repeat manufacturers too, um, and some kind of similar rides just because there's a fair bit of variety among the type. So we're going to do a couple of different things. So we've got nine total. So we're going to start out with two Zamperlas. So we'll start out with the Zamperla Thunderbolt, uh, and then we'll also do a, a variant of the Thunderbolt, a different layout that appeared in China uh, here a year or two ago. Then we'll jump over to the uh, Zero Tower Speed Coaster, uh, the lift hill variety of that. They also have a launch one, which we've done before. Uh, then we'll have the uh, Eurofighter, uh, more of a compact variety. There's a couple of the ones that we'll take a look at. Um, we may, you know, go in one direction or another. Not quite sure just yet. We'll see where that goes. Then we're going to do an Infinity Coaster uh, based on Pitts Special up at uh, up in. Uh, uh, Norway, or sorry, um, Denmark. Wait, no, Finland. There it is. Uh, <laughs> at at uh, Power Park in Finland, um, which is a, a new sort of weird layout and interesting ride. So we're going to take a look at that. And then we'll also look at the Infinity Ghoster Smiler at Alton Towers, which is currently the world record holder for most inversions. Uh, after that, we'll have Fahrenheit from Intamin. And then we're going to do two Mauer coasters. We'll do Abismo uh, in Spain and Hollywood Rocket uh, in Florida. So with all that said and done, why don't we start with Thunderbolt? Let's jump on over to the coaster database and let's take a look. So this is uh, kind of an interesting ride. For, for one, the seats are interesting. It's a uh, three by three arrangement, which makes for nine people in total assuming this picture will load but nine folks in total which is sort of an oddball arrangement um big heavy lap bar <clears throat> kind of strapped over the shoulder uh so kind of kind of interesting as far as that goes um not necessarily conducive to most family groups of two or four but you know three is three is what it is the Cool thing about this layout is how narrow it is. Um, maybe this picture will give a good variety. It's like only 35 feet across. It's very, very narrow. Um, you have a vertical lift and a nearly vertical drop, a couple inversions, big swoopy turnaround, and then some crazy airtime hills at the end. Um, so uh, an interesting layout, a pretty tight, compact layout that's just long and narrow. Um, surprisingly enough, this layout's been closed a couple of times. This is uh, this was the first one here in Coney Island. There were two more so far. There's one in Alabama in Gulf Shores at a park called Owa. And then there is one more in Korea at uh, their Robot Land theme park there. So it, it, as far as ride quality, you know, Zamperla can be a little suspect sometimes. Uh, it's not bad, and you know, I wouldn't necessarily call it amazing, but it's got some pretty crazy airtime, some pretty strong forces. Uh, track work is a little suspect, but not awful. I can certainly re-ride it, um, but I'm not going to call it probably the best coaster out there. So let's uh, let's take a ride on this one. Let's see what we can find here. Uh, let's go with the Booster Force one here this morning afternoon hey there you dude no worries uh you didn't miss anything we literally just started so we are looking at thunderbolts uh right now at coney island we're gonna take a ride on the layout here 
sandwich did look good too. If I hadn't have eaten lunch, I'd be doing more shape. Also, my voice sounds odd today. My the allergies in Florida have, uh, or the pollen count in Florida is now through the roof, and it is wreaking havoc on my everything. So I am tired and have a scratchy throat and everything else. So that's a fun time. So I apologize if it sounds different. All right, so chain lift hill vertical. You can see those brake fins on either side. That's their anti rollback device, which I think is pretty clever. This sitting in the middle of the 3x3 train, which is still just a very awkward time. All right, so nearly vertical drop, big loop. The uh, shuffling of the camera kind of indicative of the ride experience. The zero G roll is really interesting. It's three very distinct rolls, which I found interesting. Then we have this stangle dive type thing, and then this weird roll slash turnaround deal. Not quite sure what we're gonna do there. Crazy airtime here. Crazy airtime here. Corkscrew here for you know good measure, I guess. Another crazy airtime, but banked, and then some more crazy airtime right there. So. I don't think the ride is that bad. So this one was was fine. The one at Owa I thought was maybe a little bit better. Um, that one sits a little bit different. Uh, I think the, the tracking may be a little bit better. That was that one has a milestone for me since it was my 800th coaster. But um, yeah, it's it's okay. Yeah, the weird turnaround inversion. I'm not really sure how. It's any different from some of the RMC stuff. I think it's really just, and b and is doing it the same way. You'll find something like that on their wing coasters now. Um, so I, I think it's, you know, everybody kind of does the same sort of thing, just a little bit different each time. All right, so first of all, I'm looking for Twister here. Oh, Sharp Productions is, is good. They do a nice job on on-rides. All right, so I'm going to use the B&M track only because I've got the most variety of elements for it. Um, we are going to go ahead and do two stations here, a load station and an unload station. Okay, and then we put a break or two before the lift hill. So we'll slope it up somewhat, you know, slowly here. We could do the the um, dive coaster version, uh, but I don't think we need to here. Now we will though change over to vertical drop coaster and we'll end our lift just like that. One of the things, though, before we do that, let's check and see how we compare to large loops. They're pretty high right now. We'll stick with that, though. Let's see what kind of speed we're going to generate here. I will put lift hill on this piece, and then we'll let it go. Yeah, Liam, I, I like to at least make sure that I don't get too far building and, and see if it's going to be a, uh, a disaster or not. Um, and then the, the question is, how do you smooth it? Do you go with the extra piece here? I almost think they look sort of stupid when you do. Um, so I'm just going to go the full way down. You can do one steep piece in there. It it looks, you know, cursed, like you dude said there. I feel like this this doesn't look great either but it's better perhaps as you get taller it's a little bit harder to justify that i think but for this instance i feel like this is the way to go all right so let's um go up a few here and then i'll go ahead and change my trains i'm actually going to use the floorless coaster trains we don't have any for this particular ride yet um not surprising since it's a very niche thing, so I wouldn't expect to see it. I'm going to use our three car train. 
Let's take a look here. I raised this one up a little bit since I'm going to potentially use the uh, the roll and part of the turnaround, maybe. I don't quite know. I'm hoping to get there before the year 2030. If I can bug Space K enough for everything. All right, with the three tri with the three car train, we are going to have a lot slower moving elements, so we honestly can probably pull this back a little bit. Although I kind of like that speed; that seemed to be going well. And then we'll do a zero G roll. One of the things to keep in mind is your speed on uh, your zero G rolls because you don't want them to be too too fast, um, but you also don't want to get um, you don't want them to fly through it. <clears throat> because remember, the zero G roll is literally an airtime hill that produces zero Gs that happens to be rotated 360 degrees around the ride heart line. So, this is a good speed through there. We don't want it any higher than that for sure. Okay, and now the next thing that the, the real one's got is these... Um, it's like Stengel dive type thing, named after Stengel, the famous coaster engineer. You can't really do this in the game so much as just fake it like this, but that's what we'll do. Looks a little silly maybe, but not too bad. Let's see what the speed is through it though. Too slow, so that means we can come back through here, take out just a little bit more. Kind of extending this banking a little bit. It's it's a bit silly, but not too too bad. <laughs> One of these days, the save feature will come. We'll see. All right, let's see if the speed is better. There we go. That's fine. It looks weird and kind of awkward. Uh, so the turnaround now. The question is, how do we want to take it on? You can't quite do it in the same way in the game as the real thing's got. Um, but it's almost like a roll, and then it uh, curves out on the other side. So we can... You can do it in a couple of different ways. Um, I don't think any of them look good. So, like, you could, you could do a... You know, it's really doing something kind of like this, where you have a barrel roll... And then you get into a course crew and then you have this kind of down thing, but it's just not. <laughs> was a good roll. Only it's got good brisket on it. So I think in in this case it's most more of a half loop time um, and let me get a better picture of this here real quick so we can take a look at what it's doing uh park at oa uh, rolling thunder but here's the here's what the inversion is doing basically it's it's doing a zero g roll followed by a nice kind of drop here i mean it really it's it's a fancy dive loop but you've got that little bit of horizontal curve to it, which is what makes it interesting, I suppose. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, incline dive loop is more or less what you're what we're doing here. What we can do is, let's, 
Oops. Go back to the game. Because we are starting to run out of speed. The unfortunate thing is that uh, all these elements are like the same height. So you can, you know, do this and then we'll roll in there. Or we can try and roll it out. I don't like that transition, but I want to see what the speed is. Catch our speed here. All right, 58, 36. That's a good pace through there. 30 through there. And that's going to be too slow. So what we'll do is keep it low, back to 60. And then we'll do a kind of diving turnaround as wood here and now cross over. Uh, because what we need to do is get back to here. Let's see here. Oh, let's make this a 50 long. So we're trying to get to there. If we want to put a corkscrew in, that means we need to get to there. So two over from the other side. And then the entire thing is really just going to be airtime hills that have weird banking to them, which is kind of the RMC special. And you'll notice that a lot of those hills on the way back ended up having... Um, some weird banking, but none of them were terribly steep, so we don't have to worry so much about that. But enough breaks out there. Now these run three trains, um, again with the threes. Um, so unload station, load station, and one on the ride. They probably could load more, but I don't think it's really useful. But the one takeaway that I have from these these layouts is that the airtime is ridiculous on some of these hills. I am going to go ahead and gonna bank this one. All right, let's see what we're doing. So 25 through there, turn around. Up and over, not too, too bad. Now, the real one has its uh, corkscrew underneath of the 0G roll, um, kind of early, like back here. So we're right about in the same spot. <clears throat> um... It, it didn't replace the Thunderbolt per se. It is using the same name as Thunderbolt, um, but that coaster had been long since closed and long since demolished. This occupies a similar spot on the map to where the old one was, but it is not a replacement of per se. Okay, and then we'll do one more of these kind of weird banked. Once we go up to 25. Okay, so long and narrow check mark. That's that's the goal here. Actually, before we do, let's go back through and rebuild our station here. One one. Oops. Okay, give ourselves a block here, give ourselves a 
block here. And then we'll give ourselves a block pretty early on right here. All right, we'll give three trains. One, two, three. So we'll give this the original color scheme. These trains were like an orange. <laughs> I like it. Long boy. This is pretty exceptionally long. That was those markers were fifty. Fifty feet. Actually, yeah, you're right. It was more orange than it was red. So this is more or less it ended up being more or less a recreation. Uh, the only thing that I didn't do is um, is I banked this one. Hey, I do have I do have a plan to do both a um, another cursed coaster stream and probably a kids coaster stream at some point. Kids coasters maybe April first. So long and narrow. So if you have a really long park and you need a centerpiece, this is your coaster. As it turns out, that's what that Oa Park in uh, Alabama did. This is the centerpiece ride of their whole thing, and it's just as long and narrow. Okay. Well, that's one. We are going to stick with Zamperla, though, for our next one. So let's go back here and get rid of this one. That would be a good one, Liam. Indoor coasters. Um, actually, I'll go ahead and mark that down on my notes. I do have a note here at some point about doing those, just trying to find interesting enough rides that, that can be done. We've done a few indoor coasters here and there, kind of as things as the streams have gone on, but usually it's like a one-off or a two-off. So it would be good to have something similar to it. Okay, so this is um, Thunder Chariot, which is in China. Uh, this opened a year or two ago. Um, and basically, it's the same track system, the same ride system, and all of all of that. Uh, but it's um, got a different layout. Actually, a pretty interesting layout. Um, this is what they call layout 02. There is a layout 03 also, which is kind of nice. Uh, but let's uh, check out um, my pay my son and take a look. All right. I love Temple of the Nighthawk. We actually did do that in a stream, I don't know, four or five ago. Um, mine ended up being quite a bit longer than the other one. Yes, Liam, I know. But I do enjoy having the ads there just to uh, make sure that these folks get their, their due. So, vertical lift once again. Little pause at the top, which I think is kind of interesting. All right, then we have this cool element here. So it starts with an Immelman, and then it rolls down and right into a dive loop. So it's kind of got a cool double element there, followed by a zero or a, a loop. And an overbank, zero G roll. And a steep turn up into some block breaks, which are a little bit oddly positioned. It's sort of like the older or newer B&M type rides where there's a block break right at the end, because all you get is this and now we're done. Uh, so it's a little bit of an odd positioning as far as that goes. Um, be considered a trash coaster stream like the 130 cars. That would be kind of fun. Uh, I mean, I think it's going to roll into like indoor coasters in general. Um, like the Vacoma Enigma, all those. Could be, could be a good time. Anyway, so that is 
the POV thanks to Roller Coaster Dream. Let's uh, let's take a look at next one here. The Thunder Chariot. We'll use the same floorless cars. Do more or less the same thing to start. It just depends on what they wanted to have there. I mean, it's a fairly more it's a fairly bit more expensive, I would imagine. Um, I would think it's got to be there based on uh, capacity. Uh, though, granted, I don't know of any park in China that's ever been concerned about capacity, so that's a new one to me. Um, but we'll we'll see. Uh, I, I don't quite know what the answer is there, but I would think it's got something to do with um, wanting to be able to get the next one out uh, or off the lift before the other one gets back. All right, so we'll go the same. We'll go the same one twenty-five. Okay, one more. Okay, well, we're just roll one thirty. Uh, twister coaster drop. Okay, so we're gonna start with those. Uh, a double roll there, which I just think is an interesting element. I think it looks cool. And sort of an oddball, like, dip in the middle of it. We'll come back up the same height. Okay, then let's get our floorless coaster here. Floorless. Three cars again. Okay. So already, in my opinion, a little more interesting than the last one, although I do kind of like how... How weird the last one is as far as just gigantic out and pack goes. Actually holds speed reasonably well through there. A little through slow through the loop, but not too bad. So now we'll come to the point where we'll depart a little bit from the overall design just because we can't quite do a um can't quite do the um overbank i mean you can but it ends up being gigantic you end up doing an inverted top hat but good idea first of stream so first different of types which could be kind of fun See about if you look at this layout from above, it's kind of interesting because it's really just back forth, back forth, back forth the entire way, just kind of slowly scooting over each time. A little too slow, a lot too slow. But you know, we could we could do something else and go in this direction instead.
Well, that's why I was so excited for this layout when it first came out, because I was like, this is such a weird layout. And it's just interesting to me because the other original model was just such an odd layout too, but you know, it was worked and it was, I guess, realistic enough, but it's just such a weird design. I can get back up to that height. A little bit too slow is the only issue. But I guess we could drop this down as a helix. Yeah, I feel like from as far as RCT goes, you can really hide some of the overall look of the vertical lifts and vertical or beyond vertical drops just by you know, actually, yeah, Liam, you're right. Because I'm not doing anything else with this portion. Much better. Okay, so put a couple breaks in there. And then we know it's got to have this you know, final up and down. Bring back that weird airtime hill that we dad from had from the last one. Or we can do more of a figure eight here that might look a little smoother just in the game, a little less boxy perhaps. That definitely has the wavy. <clears throat> Excuse me, the wavy bits. Don't know if I like that per se, but see what it looks like. Yeah, it accomplishes the goal. Would have been nice to get something else in there, but I honestly don't hate that. Since it's China, or at least the real ones in China, we'll go ahead and just do the single station. Let's see what this looks like here with... Three of these. This one's more of a dark orange. English palette would be good for this one. With that proper good orange color. Make sure the pacing isn't half bad on this. We're actually not far off as far as the overall speed goes as far as getting to that block break. If I slow down the lift hill by two miles per hour, I might be able to get this where it operates without stacking, which would be pretty cool.
Honestly, it might be too slow. Well, yeah, maybe not. <clears throat> okay. Well, there we go. And then this one should take off right when this one goes. Okay. There we go. Free train, useful operations. Um... That should work okay. Yeah, I want to see if there's any good shots of the vehicles. Um, <clears throat> RCDB says this one runs with four tr uh, four car trains. I haven't seen that. We'll keep it with the three, I think, just to keep it. Okay, oh, four vehicles in total, I see. Okay. So we could run a, um, if we wanted to make this a little bit wider, we could run a fourth uh, train if we really wanted to. But to be honest, I think this one works okay. So use two for this one. Okay. Ooh. All right. So in the uh, interest of moving right along, we are going to go to impulse impulse is our next one here this is the zero tower speed coaster so this was the second one of these uh there were or there was a launch coaster uh that came first that one went to lagoon uh, where it has a horizontal launch and then also a vertical launch uh this one or went the launch and instead uses a lift hill and then does pretty much the same kind of layout as a Gerslauer Eurofighter. So similar compactness, kind of similar elements. This one has a nice uh, Cobra roll to start. Uh, this one's got a uh, nice uh, loop and a couple helixes and they kind of slow with a bit of hang time. Uh, corkscrew slash, well not zero G, but like corkscrew slash barrel roll. And then a good uh, final finale there. Helix. I found the trains for these relatively comfortable. They have these sort of big fat lap bars that you can see here. Bring up the vertical lift. Let's see if there's a All right, let's see, horizon level, we want the regular. Let's see what our ad is now. It is TurboTax, fantastic. Get your taxes done. <clears throat> this ride does have CSO trains for it, so we will use the Space K Tower speed cars for this. If you're putting this tra this coaster in your park, you've got a lot of coaster op or coaster track options for you, uh, from the two rail here to the tri rail above. Uh, your lift hill is going to have to be you know B and M or something like that, but you can make it look okay, I'm sure. A nice little short lift hill here. It's not a very big coaster. Over the drop and down. The corkscrew or cover roll. A course correction there and into the loop. And just some nice swooping corners here. Which I, I do really like how these interact with things, like how that helix wrapped the lift hill. That slow roll into the final, final turn here. So yeah, you know, maybe a sort of kind of knockoff Gerslauer, but as it turns out, it runs better than most of the Gerslauer 320 models because it doesn't have over-the-shoulder restraints.
and the track work is better. So oh, that is the Zero Tower Speed Coaster. Well, let's pull out the BM track again. I, I'm going to use this for most of the stuff today, uh, only because it's easy to do and I don't have to fill in a lot of other um, other track types. Um, if we were doing this in a park, like you said, you'd do a kind of an amalgam of different ride pieces to make it look correct. But for now, we're just going to sacrifice the look for getting being able to do all the different elements. Um, actually, you know how I'm going to start with this one is the cobra roll because that's going to be sized for everything else. I want it to be on the smaller end, so I'm going to use quarter loop. Actually, I might raise it up just a little bit. Let's see what the regular loop looks like. 85. Let's do that. Let's raise it up just a little bit, and then we can then we can put in the regular loop. Okay, two. Put a straight piece in there just to give it a little bit of gap. You don't need it, but it can, it can work for you. Ah, actually, that's going to be interesting because we're trying to do the steep to flat. All right, one more time. What we might do is forego that loop, at least in the beginning, and perhaps we can put it a little bit later in the layout with one of the small size loops. Pretty much all of the ones that we look at today are going to have the same sort of deal with the vertical lift, vertical drop. <laughs> I could have done the chance toboggan, but he can save that one for the uh, cursed stream. Okay, we'll go ahead and get a station of some kind. We will select the tower speed coaster trains from Space K. And one of the things to note here is you do need to turn off disable vehicle limits in order to get a two car train. Once you get the train, then you're okay. But for whatever reason, there's a bit of a glitch that keeps that from happening. Out of curiosity, let's see what this looks like with a big loop there. One thing is going to be too fast and one thing is going to be too slow. So it's just seeing how it actually rolls out. Now the problem is once you put drop towers on vertical lift coasters, you end up with a lot more forces and dynamic loads and things like that. And generally you're not going to 
if you're buying a roller coaster, you're not going to also buy a drop tower at the same time, but you got to engineer it correctly the first time on there. So there's some definite challenges with it, but I mean, you're right. They definitely did a nice job with those on the, um, the, the big ones at Magic Mountain and uh, at uh, Great Adventure. So the question I think would be what, um, you know, how how easy would it be to put in on some other ones? Because it could be a nice little addition, like, years down the line, as long as you can build it in early. Okay. We're going to hit right into that side, unfortunately. We want to try and keep this relatively compact. It doesn't need to be, you know, crazy compact, but the best as we can do. So 53 baht. I do kind of like this you know, double double turn coming up here. We're not necessarily wrapping the lift, but we're coming close. Now what we could do is actually, you know, to make it interesting. Oops, not on that. And put in a little bit of speed hump there to give us some more space to work with. Then use this opportunity to get us around the lift hill. Well, that said, we're a little bit out of position to do it right. I wonder how our vertical loop would look right here. That could be a little bit much as far as that goes, but not, I guess I don't hate it. Let me see what the pacing looks like. If it looks ridiculous, we can pull it out, but I don't think it looks bad visually. There's not a whole lot of track overlap. There's just a lot of stuff in the way. Oh. Oh, well, there's that, I guess. Huh. Yeah, I did not did not expect that. Uh, try one more time here. Because I can't do anything because it's right in the way. Well, crap. Yeah. I'm just curious if it is going to make this one or not. Let's see. That's usually what it ends up being is change the train mass. With these small trains, I kind of hate doing that. But 
Well, it makes that. It's just struggling the whole time. Huh. Well, maybe we just don't do a loop. Nothing that says we have to have one. This could be an interesting move. Let's see what kind of hang time is on this roll. Not bad at all, actually. I'm somewhat surprised that all the clearances worked on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling that one. I like it. And then let's see if maybe for a final thing we can get around this guy. Maybe not. I want to end it pretty soon, so there's probably one more element in us uh, still. A little bit too tight there. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, we could always just end it. Like that wouldn't be quite right. And it feels like the Cobra Roll is sort of off doing its own thing on that side. Where are you thinking you'd run the corkscrew? Would it be... Let me know what you think. Um, that's not a bad idea, though. Can't do anything there. Do you just mean, like, something here? About something like this. We can get it to a little too high for early breaks. Uh, I do see what you're saying about trying to get it to line up there. I would almost wish you could do a corkscrew over top of the exit of the cobra roll. We'd come up into the brakes, but something like that. We just connect it with S pen or the diagonals. Hmm. Hmm. A conundrum here. That could be it.
That may be, let's see what speed that looks like. Well, there's always, well, that's going to fit. It's going to be compact, but it'll, just take out that second station. Not a bad ending. I'd like to give ourselves a little bit more room as far as the start goes. Yeah, actually, this one turned out all right. Like, I, I feel feel decent about this one. Got a nice compact look overall. Let's see how it runs. Okay, we want with three trains. Very compact and definitely corner heavy, but I don't dislike that. All right. So speed-wise, it did drop off a little faster than I expected it to, but not awful, so. Have that great bit of air time there. That really long approach to the lift hill may work in our favor here from a block standpoint, that I don't have to adjust the lift hill speed. And yep, I don't need to at all. Actually, that works out incredibly well. So I'm very happy with this one. We go back through and, and put in the Giga Coaster track uh, through basically from the drop all the way around to kind of close to the end. Maybe this last little corner here would be by rail. Use the mini coaster or on the the beginning here to either one, but I think that turned out rather nicely. Okay. Number four, we're cruising right along here. Number four is the Eurofighter. So I didn't actually pick a specific Eurofighter. I just said compact because I figure we want to do a couple of different things or, or look at a couple of different ones. So We'll pull up Rage, we'll pull up this one. Uh, well, this, this is your time now, Q dude. Gerslauer City. All right, then we'll pull up aptly named Euro Fighter. So the 320 plus model is pretty straightforward here. Uh, looking for a good overview shot of it. And this one sold very well. Uh, it's got a vertical lift, beyond vertical drop, loop, um, overbank, and then these like kind of tight little corners in here and some rolls uh, with a final helix. So you get this roll here and a midway through. Very compact, very tight, good, good layout, hard to do an RCT. Similarly, we have something like this, which is a little bit bigger, uh, actually a lot bit bigger, but it's got... A uh, big vertical loop, a pretty crazy airtime hill right after the drop, and a zero G roll, and a couple of lower helixes. The 380 model is a little bit bigger. So, this is, I was originally done as Iron Shark down in Galveston, Pleasure Pier. Uh, this one's got an interesting layout, except that it's really short to me. Uh, so, you've got this. Vertical drop, 
our Beyond Vertical Drop into this kind of sort of similar to the second Zamperla that we did, where it's got the inversion here and then sort of a curve going down, little course correction change, then this overbank and an inclined loop into the brakes. I actually kind of like this layout a lot. It's uh, it's always weird to me when there's a big, almost inversion, literally right before the brakes, but it, it does fit in here compact or compactly, I guess. And you look at some of the supports here and everything, it's very space and support efficient. Here's another one that's kind of sort of similar to the, um, the 320 model with a little bit extra on it. This one's got a loop, it's got the overbank turn, a couple of speed corners, and then a roll into the kind of a final turnaround there. So a fair bit of opt-in, I think. Um, I feel like we're going to build something more or less along these lines, but let's uh, let's see where we go with it and see what happens. Go back into the game here. Okay. Okay. We're going to just go ahead and use the B&M track again. Same thing. For this one, I will need the uh, large loop if I'm going to do what we saw on the, the tantrum layout there where it goes around the lift hill because it's offset just a little bit. Let's get our layout in here. Whoop. This lift hill in, and then we can see about wrapping it. All starting pretty much the same. All pretty straightforward. Now the real one has what you'd almost call a cutback inversion, um, which unfortunately in the game looks like trash. It's something like this. And it's not so much that it doesn't look good on its own, it's just the transition in and out of it I, I don't think looks any good. Let's go ahead and do this just so we can test everything. So we will use the Eurofighter trains. These are another Space K model, I believe. Let's see what we're working with here. What I might actually do is we can roll this again, put a half loop on it, and do a dive loop. Which could actually look not half bad with another loop attached to it. Hey there, Kenny Boz. Welcome in. Welcome in. Thanks for joining. How are you today? 
Oh, that loop is too fast. That is way too fast. Uh, uh. Of course, the question was, and maybe I wasn't paying attention, is my dive loop too fast? And I'm guessing the answer is going to be yes if the loop was like that, but let's see. You're not too far behind. We've done three coasters so far. Um, the Thunderbolts from Zamperla, the Impulse there from Zir, and now we're on to the first of the Gerslauers. Well, that is too fast. Yikes. So we're doing a, a bit of a mock-up of a couple of different styles here uh, for the Eurofighter. Um, Mostly trying to emulate the um, the 380 model, which is like we see at uh, Darien Lake. There's one in Columbia, actually, and then there's the original in in Texas. Um, I liked that element there, kind of, but we don't can't do it with the speed. So I wonder if there's another option that we can use here. The real one had this sort of like inclined loop of sorts. If we do that, we can maybe kill off enough speed to get our zero, our dive loop in here. Of course, now we're a little farther away from the first one. In general, that's just too fast. Question maybe. Let's we we might be able to bring down the lift hill by one. Let's see what our speed is through that first inversion. Thirty one, that's probably okay to bring it down by one. Let's see. Scale-wise, this is maybe a little bit bigger than you want it to be. Um, the challenge being that RCT doesn't have medium inversions, so you really are, are kind of stuck with either big or small, and I feel like small is almost a little bit too small in a lot of cases. All right, I'm feeling better about that. Actually, now we do want to do most of it on kind of this side because one of the things with these compact layouts is what you want to consider is that. A lot of these are made on space frames, so they can be mobile if they need to be. Uh, and you're less relying on footers, but when you do that, you really want to keep it to a pretty compact uh, layout, so almost like a uh, rectangle. That's sort of what we're trying to do here, is get a, a sort of rectangle looking layout. Do a slower roll here. See about crossing back under. Just a little bit shy of it. I'd really love to be able to get a loop right in here and kind of end on it. I want to see what that speed looks like.
Okay, the roll I feel pretty good about. Actually, that loop I would feel pretty good about too if we're in the right spot for it. Do that, make it look a little. Now it's just a matter of trying to figure out how this thing ends um, with the loop right there. Um, Gerslauer does have the tendency to end a lot of their rides with, well, not a lot of their rides, but can end rides with a big inversion. Let's take Hang Time at um, Knott's Berry Farm, for example. That's got a pretty sizable inversion to end the layout. So that's why I don't necessarily think this loop is a bad thing, but right now it's not quite working out. Seeing if we could go underneath the lift hill again. <laughs> We're doing pretty good as far as compactness goes so far. We are one, two, four, eight across by eight, sixteen. We're about eight by twenty at the moment, which is not too bad as far as that goes. You know, we can almost look at hang time at knots, although I really didn't want to go for just fully onto the infinity coaster. I wanted to look at one of the more the kind of older style first. But we will be going to that here in just a minute. Of course, Gur is not out of the question, but I do think those are going to be a little bit fast just based on where we sit at the moment one two three four and i don't think we're going to have the clearance which i do not or are we so we're pretty much right in and honestly the spine kind of crosses so it would be okay ish but not enough to say okay And also finish with a helix, which is what a lot of these Gerslauers do. So that may be a play here. And that is true, Gold Rush does end with both Inversion and Helix. Or... I wouldn't mind having another Inversion on it just to have one. I, I just don't want to force an Inversion, because you never want to try and force different layouts in there, because it never ends up looking very good. Let's uh let's see how this one looks speed wise. Because that ending helix is gonna be a bit much, I think. And the challenge is for a ride like this that's a little bit shorter than most, is that it's it's a really quick ride that you're going from a big inversion down to a pretty small thing at the end. So you have some speed management issues. Because that's that's cruising through that final helix. Yeah, the inverted coaster at Tucson Fruit is going to be nice. Uh, more or less the uh, the same layout as Gold Rush, which is really interesting. Uh, but, you know, the layout seems to work, so why not?
Okay. When you have compact coasters like this, the biggest issue is trying to get it to finish. So trying to see where your elements are so that you can actually do it without running into stuff at the end. A little bit too much right hand turn. Well, let's see what happens if we put a loop over here. We can maybe wrap around one more time and Get this to fit okay. I just don't want it to get too long. One of the issues here visually that we run into is that this whole section of track now all blends together. So the roll, the curve drop here, and this loop all blend together into one. So this is not the angle that you want to be viewing it at, which kind of the angle to which we built most of the ride on. So I'm going to take a little bit of a step back. The speed is fine, I just don't think the placement is right. I think we were probably on to something here before where we went across. And it could be just as much as ending it, like right now. That may not be the worst move. Just give a give, give up a lot of speed at the end, but lengthwise this is about right. One, two, three, four, five. Kind of wondering if it would be possible to end in a nice a nice big helix down. Out here. That seems to fit the whole first lower MO. That's not bad. We're going to stick out a little more than we want to over here. But it also gives us space for a station. And we can hold a second train out here. Hold one right here. Do our station. It's going to be cruising through this whole thing, but I think it'll work. Okay. Give it three trains. And then we're going to go with the tantrum colors just because they're obnoxious. We'll go with orange. Okay, that roll is pretty good. I, I kind of like the way that that works. 
And then we'll end with this final helix, which is a little bit fast, but isn't isn't overly so. Go ahead and slow down the lift hill. And then I think I will actually take out this block, but I'll put a nice slow break on here so it slowly approaches the lift hill, gives us a little bit more time. You try and figure out as much as you can blocking wise just without without having to adjust the dispatch times. At least I prefer to. But we'll see how this goes. It's a pretty relatively fast ride, relatively short, so at the right speed, we should be able to come on home just before this one crests the lift. I think that'll be fine. Because now it's going to crest the lift and then the next one will be gone, so this one doesn't even have to stop before it gets into the station. Perfect. Final tally as far as width goes, we are five and ten across by five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-four. This is a ten by twenty-four size ride, perfect for compact spaces. I thrill. Okay. So there is our first Kerslauer Eurofighter. And now we're going to move over to the Infinity Coaster, which is more or less the same thing as in a, a Eurofighter, just with more opportunity, some new trains, and some other things that uh, improve the overall ride experience. What we're going to look at here is a coaster called Pitts Special. This opened up the other year uh, up in Norway. There again, I screwed that up up in Finland, and it's kind of an odd, oddball layout. So the park already has a Gerslauer Infinity Coaster called Junker right next to the thing, and it's a great layout. Love it. It's launched. It's got a top hat on it. it just looks great in general. It also happens to be dark green and white. So the park bought another coaster from Gerslauer, another Infinity coaster, with similar trains, with track in dark green and white, and build it literally right next to the other one. And that's this coaster. This is Pitts Special. So Pitts is a type of airplane. Um, but you can see in the background that's this top hat here is part of Junker. Uh, and instead we have this coaster over here with some weird elements very reminiscent of Karnan and some kind of long stretched bits here goes up and around the go-kart track a very odd ride let's uh let's take a ride on it if we can here all right we will go Parker Libs. Thanks to these folks for their POV today. All right. It's a very odd ride. It's basically the family coaster that sits next to the thrill coaster, um, but a little bit weird that the, the family coaster just so happens to have a vertical lift and a nearly vertical drop. Yeah, Josiah, the um, Mystic was great. I really enjoyed Mystic. So we have a nearly vertical drop. Then this sort of figure 80 type helix thing almost rolls back there. It's real slow. A long, drawn-out airtime hill. This twisted airtime hill here was so slow that you're not going to get airtime out of it. Sort of... Fan curve, wave curve, whatever you want to call it. Another twisted airtime hill. And then another airtime hill. Another airtime hill. 
and into the brakes. Nice looking ride. It's just weird that there's this entire coaster next door that is the same color, the same type, the same everything that this one's just sort of sitting here doing its thing. But it's, it's not small, like 142 feet. Like, this is a big coaster. It's just such a weird, weird, uh, weird selection of elements. But I do like Infinity Coasters quite a bit. Um, they're pretty interesting. Caracho is at uh, Trips Drill is great. Uh, Mystic uh, at Wall of Your Own Helps. A lot of fun. Really good ride. All right, let's stick our... Oh, yeah, Dueling Dragons was one, one ride. I mean, yes, they are side by side, but it's the same. It's this. It's one ride that happens to be two coasters put together. This one is not advertised as two, as, as a single coaster that just happens to have two rides side by side. I mean, those were designed with the ride, the rides together. These were designed across separate years, separate instances as far as install goes. It's just it's an odd, an odd thing to me. But we could go a little bit taller on this one just because the real one's got some decent height to it. The problem is it's going to end up being how how tall do we want to go? Okay. a single train for now uh let's go ahead and switch this to the tower speed trains just because i think these look a little more reminiscent of the current version of infinity coasters yeah the, Jose, the the rumor was originally when this was getting built that it was going to be an extension of Junker, and they were going to put like a second launch on it or something and it would take the longest launch coaster since taiga had uh, just recently taken that it's just it never happened um which is probably for the best that would have been an interesting interesting thing not that i would have complained i think it would have been fun to see It would be pretty funny to see them combine both of the rides. All right. Let's give this thing a, a weird enough layout here. It doesn't look quite weird enough, I don't think. The the voting thing on Fury is interesting to me because I think it's kind of cool to give a variety of ride experiences. What I don't necessarily like is that if you really want one of the two, then it would be nice to be able to queue for that. In my opinion, like if I ran the park, my I would have just two queue lines. You don't get to vote for it, but you can, you know, go through different queue lines. Like it's a cool idea. I just don't like the crowd control mentality that I can't necessarily guarantee that I'm going to get the ride that I want every time. And I know they have a front row only queue, but they don't have a back only queue. So they're they're one queue away from doing that. I don't know why you wouldn't just make two different queues. I mean, it's the novelty of it, and I'm kind of thinking that once the novelty wears off, then they might be looking at that, but we'll see. 
this kind of a mix of elements is awfully hard to do in the game. Um, it's almost like a non-inverting loop, per se. Which we can do. Let's see what that looks like. Not good is the overall answer, but we can make something reasonably cursed. Good enough for me. We'll put some of those airtime hills in here. The big thing is going to be no inversions. That's the... That will be the difficulty, perhaps. I am a fan of my reasonably cursed rides. <laughs> you know, ride play, I thought about that as an interesting option for these types of rides. Where you can push a button and your switch track takes you to whichever one. The problem is, as a park owner, then you are buying essentially two rides or, you know, a ride and a half for something that's only going to be traversed a fraction of the time, you know, just by default. So I, I like the idea. Hard to think that anyone will buy one, but kind of a neat thought. All right, let's see if this is too fast. It might be. Probably is. Eh, not too bad. Okay. Yeah, trackless dark ride, I, I could definitely see it happening where there's for multiple paths and you can go in different ways. I actually designed a ride like that for the Disney Imaginations contest um, years ago, probably 12, 12, 15 years ago, probably. Our idea was a kind of labyrinth of the Minotaur type ride where you rode in a... Um, little excavation vehicle and you had a light mounted to the front and you pointed the light in the directions that you would want to go um but yeah that, you don't have a choice um as far as those existing ones go there's just multiple paths i mean we've had multiple path trackless dark rides for years but the be the actual you know choice could be could be pretty interesting it's just from a programming logic standpoint that's a that's a big one. That's a challenge. Okay, so let's keep this going, keep this interesting. Yes, yeah, so I thought it would be kind of a neat, a neat idea for a ride, but um, I didn't win, so I guess Disney didn't think so. <laughs> Okay, we got our first kind of weird element here. Got our twisted airtime hill. Weird. There it is. Find random known objects. We play in Battleship. Hmm. Okay. 
We need to figure out what's next on this one. The real ride was was pretty pretty consistent as far as just stuff goes. What we could do is give it a that wave turn, and instead of doing a wave turn, you could do it like this. Uh, I think the speed was struggling there. Let's see again. Okay, yeah, the speed is struggling, so let's... Disney will work with plenty, it's just the... For one, you gotta get through Disney's contracting process, and that's, you know, their contracts are very much in favor of the owner, which, you know, they, they should be, I guess, as the owner writing the contracts. But then, it's just you have to be able to put up with a lot of Disney's you know, stuff. And they want to do a lot of their kind of work in-house or have the programming logic and things like that they can control. But, I mean, to be fair, Universal is the same way. While Comeback may not make coasters at the moment, they do do a lot of uh, ride parts, and they do a pretty good business in ride parts. Okay. Do our sort of fan curve here. And now we're just trying to figure out how to wrap this up in a, in a semi-decent looking way. I don't usually like dropping down and then coming back up. But if you do that, you need a flat section. Ah, oh, right in the way. We're very close on there, which is such a shame. Yeah, well. How about this? Let's say we finished this one. One, two, three, four. The real one's got this sort of meandering type layout, which is not usually my favorite i like ones that flow from element to element but we will be pretty well covered here can i go across that will actually tie it together a little bit if i can What am I hitting? Oh, shoot. We already crossed once. Not today. One of the things when you are banked and then you go up and into a, an element uh, or like a, a hill incline or decline and that's the shallow variety, generally bank your Track one more time and it'll end up looking a little bit smoother. Not necessarily a lot, but enough that I think it is beneficial. Okay. And then we will use that to wrap up everything. Actually this up just a little bit there we go Put 
for another break here just to extend this out a little bit. Turn, turn. Clear. Slow down break here. A little bit short, so we'll add a bit more. Okay, entrance, exit. Okay. Three trains again, which is, I think, the name of the game today. This probably looks the least like the real thing so far today, but... Okay. Oh, I cannot stand the saturated green. Or that one with the flat green. Doesn't look half bad. Hey, Hydra, welcome in. Well, welcome in. Thank you for coming out. We are five coasters in so far. We'll do a little bit of a review here, and uh, then I'm going to take a quick break here, and then we'll finish with our last four. Making pretty good progress at the moment. This is a party like RCT2 on a Saturday. Right. So that is number five. There. Okay, so let's uh, clear that one out and then take a look at what we've done so far by way of review. <clears throat> so we have Thunderbolt here, our long boy, long and narrow coaster here, a couple inversions. We got our Stengel dive here that's got the banking. Wish we had the trains, but do not have those, so I may have to bug Space K to see if we can maybe get some of those. Second one is a, another version of the Zamperola Thunderbolt. A little bit different from the real thing. We did a little bit of more, a little more creative of a layout, perhaps. But I do like this layout in general a little better. And with the slow enough lift hill, we can make this whole thing work with that mid-course brake run really well. Number three was Impulse uh, by Zero, based on the Knobles Grove Impulse Coaster. Uh, no loop on this one, but uh, we do have a nice little speed hill there, and uh, in my opinion, a pretty flowing layout that looks rather nice. So I'm happy with how this one has turned out. Then we did our Gerslauer Eurofighter here. That's looking all right. It's a little bit speedy here at the end through this helix, but not too, too bad. I'll, I'll take it. And then just now we finished our uh, first of the Grislauer Infinity Coasters. This is based on Pit Special, uh, which is up at Power Park in Finland. Finally got it right. Uh, so this is sort of a more meandering type layout with uh, just in general, it's a weird coaster. Um, so one of the ones that I wanted to showcase just because I am all about showcasing the interesting and weird. So, speaking of interesting, our next four are going to be pretty cool, I think. Uh, so, next up is going to be Smiler from Alton Towers. Uh, after that, we'll look at Fahrenheit. Then we'll look at two X cars. We'll look at Abismo uh, from Spain. And then we'll look at Hollywood Rocket from Universal Orlando. So, let's jump back here and look at Smiler. So, Smiler... As you may know, if you were into coasters, is the current world record holder for inversions. 14 of them, so substantially so. Uh, there are two lift hills and two, um, two lift hills, you know, two sections of the ride. And it's, uh, it's got a lot of just stuff. Uh, we're not necessarily going for the record of inversions here today, but I'll do something similar to it. Uh, Smiler is also kind of nicely knotted together, uh, which I think always looks really good. Uh, we may not necessarily go to that full um, level. So let's, uh, you know, I feel like we can just go kind of straight into it, but um, looking at the different elements here, there's some pretty cool stuff. Um, but one vertical lift hill, one inclined lift hill, no launches. Over the shoulder restraints, however, which is maybe a detriment. 
which is a lot of cool stuff. It also kind of sort of self duels, uh, which is a nice feature too. Although we're not gonna spend the time on that at the moment. All right, let's see here. Do the twenty fifteen layout here. Watch for ESPN commercial. Blah blah blah. All right. Thanks again to Coaster Force for the video. We have a little bit of a start here with this drop and roll of a standard Gerslauer trick. We have a lift one. Here we go. This is a pretty cool layout, you know, as far as ride quality goes. It, from what I hear, it, it there's a little bit of, you know, hit or miss. But I think the layout is really neat. And I mean, if you're going to shove 14 inversions onto a coaster, I think it was done well as far as this goes. Interestingly enough, 14 inversions without a single vertical loop. We got this kind of zero G roll into the drop, dive loop, Immelman of sorts, of an airtime hill into this kind of really flared Cobra roll type thing. And a corkscrew and into our brakes for lift two. I do not have this credit yet, uh, if I get to go to England this year, then I will, uh, or, you know, hopefully I will, assuming it's open, uh, that's the question, though. At any rate, it is better than the quad roll that Intamin uses, or at least it's more creative, anyway. Here is our vertical lift. We have a left hand drop here, passing by the other train coming down. Another one of these roll drops. Or a sea serpent type roll here. Another airtime hill. Now we're into this big flared cobra roll. Intertwined very nicely within the batwing. We have one corkscrew and two. And if you've been keeping track, that is 14. So I think it's pretty well done, um, pretty interesting, and it's uh, it's pretty cool. The thing is, is that I think if Alton didn't have the restrictions, they probably wouldn't have built a coaster like this. Um, I I do think the restrictions to you know good or bad do push them to do a little bit more creativity as far as uh, all of that goes in their layouts. Okay, so this one's going to be tough because there's a lot of really cool design elements on this thing, but it doesn't necessarily fit RCT very well. We're actually going to start kind of mid-ride. I want to get some of these things done. End of time. Oh, and that makes sense. I mean, the the Alton Towers um, secret weapon projects, the SW whatevers, have always been specifically about you know let's get the let's get something memorable. What is what is the memorable thing? Whether it's a record or whatever that may be. So the they all want to do something interesting, which I, I kind of appreciate that. Um, they have something to talk about with it. All right, so we're going to say, let's go ahead and turn this around. 
in at a decent height here. Maybe a little closer to 60. Okay, Twister Coaster 1 is in the way. If one unit lower is going to do it for us. So what we're trying to do is get this cool intertwined Batwing and whatever else. Let me see if one more actually makes it look a little more together. Kind of does. Okay. So there's our first interesting bit, perhaps. Give ourselves some appropriate color schemes going on. <laughs> it's a compete. Not anymore, I guess. I think I ruined that. All right. So now we can kind of build ourselves backwards from a number of these elements. Yeah, I, I do like to do a lot of coasters in that sort of idea where you start with the thing that you are most interested in making correct and then you go from there and try and adjust it um, because it, it, you really want to focus on the thing that's most important and then go from there so that's what we did we are substantially high on this side we don't quite want to be there We want to be at we are at 85 on that one so let's see what one more the the real ride is built into a bit of a trench uh, on the one end which is probably a good idea And we end up being a little bit close on this side. So what we can do is just give this a little bit more space to work with. Well, it is compact. It's not really compact because it's a freaking huge coaster. That's interesting. Everton modifying Vacoma trains for... Disneyland Paris's Big Thunder to include doors. Although there's been more than a couple of incidents where kids have gotten their foot caught between the train and the uh, the ride, which which always surprises me a little bit because I'm kind of like, how are you doing that? That seems a little silly uh, or a little amazing that anybody could get their self caught, but maybe this is interesting. Hmm. Well, thank you for the heads up there what I think I've just done however is screwed myself for future pieces here coming off of the side because we're going to run into the layout there we're also going to run into it here
So let's see what we want to do with that. That is interesting because the, there's a couple of rides that I've seen that already kind of do that, which is, is kind of cool. It's nice to have the good accessibility options in that way. Okay. So far we have four inversions here. Five and six. <laughs> Doing ADA accessible coaster college. A little bit of shame that we can't cross over a little bit more. Might try going the other direction. Doing it this way instead. Yeah, although to be honest, I don't think a whole lot of manufacturers care uh, at that point. I think it's a did we get paid? Yes or no? And yeah, you might be sad that your coaster got rid of, but still, it's not not the worst. Money talks. You are right. Hmm. All right, well, let's hold on that for just a minute. I kind of want to see if I can bring this down one just to make ourselves or make this easier to deal with. Hey, Zara, welcome in. Thank you for coming. Caught us in the middle of a difficult one at the moment. Okay. All right, let's do quarter loop down and do ourselves the corkscrew at that level. Yeah, the Eurofighter happened. We'll uh we'll take a look. Yeah, we're doing Smiler at the moment. It's uh proving to be a challenge for sure. Um but always fun to have a challenge, I would say. Okay. Let's see what we want to do here. All right. I think there is a ride photo for this one. Relatively certain there is. Unless I think we're going to kind of try and do our own thing here a little bit. Because we have a little bit of work to do here as far as inversions go and everything else. Um, I'm actually building in the opposite direction right now because I kind of want to do the real thing's got this like sea serpent roll here Let's see if we can combine that together Maybe in order to separate this out a little bit, this one gets right. 
we'll end up having to turn this around in a minute, but we need to see if it if it works first. If it works, then we can rebuild it in the opposite direction. Eighty feet to sixty-five, so that means that one of them is going to be slow and one of them is going to be a little bit fast, perhaps. We're a little less concerned on this one about weird speed variation, just because we've got the four-car trains, which is going to help us out immensely. Over the barrel roll there. And that's 85 throughout, which means that we probably want to go one, two. Make sure we haven't totally killed ourselves here and that we can get something out in. That's a little bit of a tight transition there, but not too bad. Really, we're going to have two dive loops in a row, which the real ones got um, a similar, similar sort of stuff. Although, aha, uh -huh. sneaky, we were incorrect the whole time. We needed a clearance envelope issue here. Okay. Alright, to the left, and... And this one's gonna have to get pulled out and do something else. That's okay. Oh, thank you for watching the park reviews. It's been a little bit lean lately, and actually the reason that it's been that way is because I've been finishing up my solo park, uh, the Japanese park that some of you may be familiar with. Um, so that's been a, taking my time and also being quite busy at work. So I am hoping to get a bunch of those uh, reviews done here soon. I've got quite the backlog. Um, so I wanna do, oh, here we go. You got quite the backlog there, so I want to do uh, a number of them soon. I also want to get back to some hacking tutorials uh, just to really try and get back to where things were when we were cranking out videos here on this channel pretty often. Okay. Feel free, I will gladly look at any video or any park. All right, heck yeah, that's what we wanted. I wanted to get that corkscrew in there. That's going to be way too fast, though, I think. 35, uh, shoot. Maybe. All right, well, either way, we need to uh, reverse these. So let's go ahead and do that.
Nope, we are too tall. I think too forward. Yep. Yeah, the, the inside look videos will be coming soon. Um, I've got a couple of ones lined up that I want to do. Uh, trying to get some people aligned. Actually, I got a lot of really good comments when FK and I did the review of his Seasons Park. Um, so I'd like to do something similar to that again with a couple other parks. Uh, challenge generally being time zone. Thank you. I think I'm too low again. Or too high. Drop by one. This one here. Okay. Almost there. Figured this one was going to take the longest time out of all the ones that we had today, just because there's so much to it. That's what I've been wanting to do for quite a while now. <laughs> that would be a uh, reviewing Storybook Glen is going to Storybook Storybrook Glen going to take uh, a little while. We get everybody involved. Nice looking park though. I'm excited to see it in person. Okay. Now I'm going to roll two right. Because that can line us up nicely for things up there. Okay, so now we're actually doing pretty good at the moment. I don't want to give it some space here. Okay, so at the moment we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten inversions. We'll have eleven and twelve on either drops, thirteen on the uh, before the lift hill, and then kind of quite a few more coming in. Uh, so let's see how the best way to do some of these lifts is going to be. Wonder how big this will look. My quarter loop. 110 is probably going to be a little bit too much. A little bit, maybe. Unfortunately, the other challenge of doing it this way is that now we don't quite know what it's all going to look like um, as far as speed management goes because we haven't been able to test anything because we don't know where our station is or where the end of the lift is like you can put a dummy station is in but you need to know where the top of the lift is to make it happen so that is our first challenge here I do kind of like these sorts of drops. I think they look nice. We do have... A, I'm trying to figure out, too, where my gap is for lift hill-wise and everything like that. Uh, just based on where... Which half is going to be first and which half is going to be second, because we don't quite know at the moment. Got one, two, four.
It does get in the way over here. Wonder if I can. I will. So I'm gonna see if I can put a loop in here. This could be really interesting. Maybe. Three. Three. I'm going to hit something. I know I will. Not going to work. It would be pretty sick if it did. Get a couple more tries. Since where is everything? This is centered. That's where I want to come down. I'm not going to be able to get under there. Ah, poop. That would have been a lot of fun if we could have <laughs> fit a loop around that whole, whole bit. Fine. Okay, so we're just out of the Cobra Roll now, trying to find our way back to... Well, good question. Let's see here. So this... First bit up here includes the cover roll, so I can't. This side's got to connect to that side, or this side's got to connect to the other side here. Um, I need to be offset by one. I'd love to know what kind of speed we're going to end up dealing with on some of these. Okay. Maybe this is where it happens. Where this one comes in, hits the brakes, then heads out to our larger first bit. So can we get this aligned here? Here we can. This is the first time, uh, surprisingly enough, this is the first time I've ever tried this ride in RCT2. Um, I've done it in, back when Parkitect first came out, I actually did it in there uh, when it was still pre-alpha. Um, just testing out their new coaster system, and I actually got a pretty, a pretty decent looking layout over the whole thing. Okay. I'll leave that alone for now, but okay. And I know that the real one doesn't quite cross like this, but I'm wondering be kind of a neat first element there. Ah, so close. Yeah, I'm kind of wanting to see if we can almost duel it like that. That could be a lot of, a lot of fun. I don't 
want to do that. Don't want to do that either. Hmm. We got our massive track going here. I can't even imagine starting to support this. We're close. I think we're almost there. We're, we're not too far off from where I think we need to be. Gonna figure out what's gonna make this work. What park has the best food out of all my travels? Knobles. Knobles Park in Pennsylvania is amazing. Absolutely amazing food. Um, I will give shout outs to uh, Europa Park's uh, buffets and their hotels, uh, which are absolutely amazing. Uh, I will also call out um, you know, Dollywood for some great food. They have a nice one also. All right, this is fine. Not fine. Uh, okay. Thought we had it there for a minute. This will be fine to end once we need to get to the end. That's easy enough. Because right now I think I can just roll it a couple of times to get there. Um, but yeah, Knobles is one of my favorite parks in general. Um, not just because the food is amazing. Uh, but it's also just a really nice park in general. Uh, I would imagine dogs are allowed there. I think they are. But you know it's got to be good when dogs are allowed. I don't know. I actually um, had dinner with uh, Rick Knoble, who was one of the park owners the other night. Um, would have thought to ask him. But uh, <laughs> it'd be nice if the dogs could ride the coasters. That'd be fun. Uh, all right. We're almost there. Problem is just trying to make sure it doesn't get sloppy. Because it's already, it's already a mess, but at least I feel like... I feel pretty good about the variety of stuff that we've done so far. That's why a dog is straight. <laughs> that would be great. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, one more thought. What if we went... Give it a little bit of a gap. There it is. Okay. Let's 
So first of all, let's make sure that this thing even runs first, and then we can adjust it from there. Uh, we will use the Eurofighter cars, I guess. Four cars. Let's let's see what happens. This is a ugly looking thing, isn't it? But also kind of cool at the same time. Yeah, that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted it to just pause there. Now these are a little bit more normal. Oof, a little bit much there. Not bad there. Uh, okay, then we'll have to fix all that. Ooh, not quite enough. But that's okay. Because what I want to do is a few things. First of all, this one needs another... Another set. Then this one here. Needs another. Oh, my crashed into something. See what happens if I can use the vertical. Yeah, that might not be a good thing. Hmm. Okay, we can fix that. Get it out of the way entirely. Will be the whole rest of the stream, I feel like, but all right, I'm feeling good about this, and I think it's usually want a stream where it's a little bit more challenging than I think everybody might expect initially. All right, let's try that with some adjustments there. I think we are maybe better shape. And then the hope is that we can get these things to duel, which would be pretty neat. We kind of built it half and half. Okay. All right, that sound uh, that feels right as far as speed goes. And let's see if it makes it here. And hopefully, it'll make it through the rest. It'll be real sad if it doesn't. Low there, but not too bad. Not too bad. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! 
Hmm. Okay. Well. Hmm. <laughs> what do I want to do? It might be booster time, but it might also be. Let's do a couple more things here. First of all, I want to do that. Yeah, more or less. You know, we haven't really talked about that yet. The Smiler was involved in a pretty substantial accident at one point um, where human error, unfortunately, caused a uh, pretty bad accident where uh, there were some pretty major issues there. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's a bit of a sad thing, and it definitely hurt the uh, reputation of Alton Towers and uh, just in general of the... Uh, Merlin brand for a long time. Back in. Okay. Hurry up and get around here and see if this makes a difference. If not, I will throw some boosters in there just to, in the interest of time. Should be okay. That's good enough for me, to be honest. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we will finish here with a roll. Why can I not put a support there? Ah. A lower roll, hopefully? Nope. Not one of those. I'm a smart girl. I like that. Ah. ah. Frustrating as hell. Uh, I hate putting this many straight pieces in on these, but you know what? I'm beyond caring. Question is, this is now going to screw up all of my other things too? The answer is probably. The answer is yes. Okay. Well, we make it go lower after the half loop. I'm a little bit confused as to what you mean there. Feel free to elaborate. Trench the eggs of the cobra a little to... problem is I can't get... Oh, to elongate the cobra roll, uh, or drop the barrel height. I guess my problem I'm concerned about 
is that I feel like the barrel roll height may be a little bit too too far. Uh, I, I guess I'm just worried it might be a little bit too fast. Because, like, at what, this height is what I'm guessing is going to pass? Well, that passes. Okay, that passes. Oh. Well, they all pass when clearances aren't checked, so... That's not pass. Okay. Let's see how fast those rolls are, just out of curiosity. They might not be too bad. Of course, they might also be horrendous. It's a toss up. Break. Okay, let's see how this works. And if you were keeping track, this one's got 15. I mean, I didn't count wrong, which is also possible. Eighteen, thirteen block breaks. Oop. All right. Go. All right. Uh, okay. Well, it's got the uh, the surprise roll there. That would be kind of neat if it. And it, I mean, I guess that's uh, Carnan's trick or one of their tricks, isn't it? Okay, and I do not want this to get off of the blocks, which is why I've got to get close this up. Okay, so this, and then we're going to take off the lift hill there. I'm trying to set up the duel just to see if it does anything. If it does, cool. If it doesn't, then, you know, whatever. We gave it a try. Sorry about your bathroom issues, Q, dude. All right. Cool. So he's going to sit and wait while this one does its thing, and then hopefully we'll get to see something work properly here. Uh, it's going to be a little bit too slow, I think. Oh, who knows? Let's see what happens. 
You get a nice flyby here. Kind of. Yeah, there we go. Not bad. Oof, those rolls are quite cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, not not maybe the finest hour as far as those go, but I'll uh you know what? I'm gonna take it. We put enough time into this that uh we're gonna call it. I'm not totally happy with it, but I'm also not totally upset with it either. Like, I feel like it turned out kind of, sort of, okay. It looks like a banana, but that's okay. Yeah, honestly, trim breaks may do it. You know what? Let's look at that. Yeah, it's, it's honestly way better than it should be for, because uh, we really did spend like 40 minutes on this ride. Yeah, Max Force takes it, but that Max Force also has um, over uh, lap bars. All right, pause this. What are we here? 42, 55, 46, okay. I don't condone trim brakes typically, but let's see what's going on here. Let's see what 49 gets us to. It's still too slow in the Cobra roll, but that's all right. We just run into pacing issues all over. All right, that's better. That is it. We are done with that one. We got off the list. Bam. Okay, now in the interest of not taking until like 7 p.m. tonight, this is Fahrenheit. So Fahrenheit is our next one. We're moving on to Intamin next. Uh, this is the only Intamin that I did, although there's still a... Uh, uh, there's one being built in China right now of a similar type of design, like similar ride type with this vertical lift beyond vertical drop and some cool stuff. But anyway, I really like Fahrenheit. I think it's a pretty cool ride. I think it looks really good, uh, just in general. You can't easily recreate the thing in RCT because of the angles of everything, notably the corkscrews and the size of the corkscrews. But... This is a great looking ride. Here's the best shot of it. You've got a uh, vertical lift, beyond vertical drop, uh, the Norwegian loop, copa roll, double corkscrew, and then the figure eight finale. So it's pretty short. There's not a whole lot to it, but honestly, I just really like the layout. In in general, I just think it's a good good coaster. So let's get started. Coaster coaster again, just for the sake of being able to build all the elements. It really is the double inversion ride. I guess I never paid attention to that, but Norwegian Loop is double, Hope Roll is double, and then your double cork, obviously. That's funny. Okay, let's check and see. What did we do here? We did 125 on this one. Did 130 on this one, which had enough speed to do those elements. And if we want to get the Norwegian and the Cobra roll in it, then we should do the same. Change over to our vertical drop. Back to our twister. Uh, let's actually do one down. Uh, 
I'll fix the station in a minute. Norwegian loops are great. Uh, honestly, Speed Monster uh, and Tusen Frude, great ride. And that ver the uh, Norwegian loop is in like the perfect spot since it's right at the entrance of the park. You come right through the gate, and that's the first thing that you see. You got to take an escalator up, literally through it. That's beautiful. Great setting. All right, fix this. Go ahead also and select the Intamin. Uh, we'll go with the Intamin LSM, why not? Three cars. Yeah, basically it's just a dive loop in a... Uh, in... No, I, I, I didn't... Uh, I don't typically do the beyond vertical drops here just because I, feel, I find the hacking to be a little bit of a pain. Uh, but, you know, if you ever wanted to do one, you just hack in your backwards and then drop it and then um, add another straight piece here. So we will pass on that for now. It actually comes in to the uh, Norwegian loop pretty easy. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make sure we're doing the same here. Okay. And then I can do either of this at 80 or, yeah, I think I'll do this so that we can keep it at 80 because otherwise it's going to be at 85. Oof, okay. Well, not that then. Actually, yeah, Course Park has, Shogo did a very nice job on that one. Yeah, she nailed the, nailed the layout on, of, of these types of rides. I would agree with you, it's one of my favorites there also. Off that. Yeah, both both course parks were just really, really well done. Great pieces of RCT. Let's see how the train treats that height elevation there, because what we might do... It's a little bit slow, a little slower than I wanted. So let's stick with the smaller. See if this allows us to properly... Nope. Okay, that's where we were just a minute ago. Yeah, no worries on the, the photos. Um, that's what my uh, photo site is there for, is to be able to give you good uh, good coaster reference images. Um, so I want to have that as a good service uh, for these sorts of things.
I can get just out of the way. The thing that I'm trying to do, if I can get just out of the way, is I can corkscrew over top of the drop. And that's what I want, is to be able to, to, do, to do that. I don't really like coming up, back up into a corkscrew, but we might have to do that. Oh, and those are just about the right speed, too. You get a little bit of pause at the top. Okay, let's see how the speed is taken there. I may want to go one smaller. Yeah, the double corks are difficult on this one, and, you know, I mean, it underlies a major problem with the game as far as elements go, is that the, the medium corkscrew just needs to exist in order to really be able to do... Uh, to, to do uh, anything with it. And so, because ideally you'd be on the ground here and you'd have a corkscrew the same height as that. Let's try for some sort of a figure eight finale of sorts. You can raise the ground, it's just, and that's usually the trick if you're trying to find, you know, good looking options. It's just, I always don't like having to do those sorts of things just to be happy with it. Well, that can give us our ending there if we want. Just end up putting the only thing that we're missing on here is uh, Fahrenheit to get this really great airtime hill um, part way through. Got a lot of good, uh, good stuff out of it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After I can barrel roll. Yeah, I mean, you know, there, there's, as soon as you get into the peace discussion, there's just so many different pieces you could have, and there's just so many different things that I am looking for in this game. But I suppose beggars can't be choosers on a 20-year-old game. Okay, let's not feeling it. I think the parks used RCT in the late. <laughs> uh, no, but it would be a pretty funny image of a park using that. Now, Park Asterix, or not Park Asterix, um, Park St. Paul in um, France used RCT on their maps, um, and their new Gravity Group wooden coaster is an RCT wooden coaster on their maps, like, that are posted up all around the park, and it's really, really funny. I'll have to see if I can find the picture of the map that I brought from home. Um, because it's just like, it's a regular park map, but it's just got an RCT wooden coaster plopped on the corner. 
I will uh, I will find that this evening after the stream, and I will post it. Let me see how that turns out. One, two, three, four, six. Perfect, actually. Okay, it hits well. As long as that ending isn't too, too slow, then I think we're golden. We're also too high. So... Go one, two. Yeah, Kentucky Kingdom did use the um, Planet Coaster for their um, Kentucky Flyer video, which was a bizarre choice. Um, if you would think that they would have at least deemed a station or something with it, but, you know. I mean, most coaster manufacturers use a, um, uh, do use no limits of some variety for their marketing purposes. Granted, nobody uses that for actual design. They do use it for showing back and forth when you're talking with clients about what you want. You send back and forth some no limits files. All right, let's see how this one's going to turn out. A little bit worried about that final curve before the drop there, but let's see if it's too high or not. Move pretty well through those course screws. Yeah, that's going to be too slow. I am thinking we want to redo that just a little bit. Let's well, level it out and go flat there. <laughs> the layout was not approved by Androsic Amusement Academy. It was a pretty odd layout, if I remember correctly. One, two, three, four. We're going to do that instead. Decent way to finish that up. We'll give you a little bit of interaction too while you're sitting there waiting for the ride to go. Might be a little bit too short. Nine, thirteen, thirteen, eighteen, eighteen, twenty two. And as always, never put your coaster on the ground. Bring that down. I'm excited for your Six Flags Great America Park Hydro. I think it'll be really nice. Recreations are difficult, especially when you want to get exacting with it. Like I find that the, the hard part of recreations is finding out where to 
um, where to compromise and where to, you know, make it look a little bit awkward in order to get realism. Yeah, this one is on the shorter side. I think it's just a matter of the, the train is losing steam fast here. Like, honestly, that's almost too slow. But that's okay. Yeah, these trains are really, really nice looking. I don't think any kind of speed differential is going to change the way that that runs. All right. So, here's number seven. We've got two more. We're moving to Mauer. So, Mauer has their X car coaster of which we are going to, to go take a look at now. So the X-Car coaster started out as just the Sky Loop, which is uh, you know, it just was this portion where you go up a vertical lift, uh, upside down off the lift hill, roll upright, roll back down, and then back into the station. And it would go around, up, and it would go back the other way, and it would go back up, catch, and then lower into the station. But Malware offered a couple of kind of interesting um, add-ons for a few different layouts of their rides. And uh, at one point, they actually had a, a cool model at one of the IAPA expos where the standard Skyloop could be expanded in two different times. Um, and you see a park could add on to it later down the line and, and do essentially a you know, growth over time, marketed as a new attraction while not having to pay for uh, a whole brand new coaster. Now, granted, nobody has ever done that, which is not surprising to me because I think if you're going to spend that much, you're going to add new capacity and new ride hardware and everything else into your park, or I would think that's what you would want. But one of the parks did buy a larger coaster from the outset from Mauer, and that's here. This is Abismo at Parque de Atracciones in Madrid. So this is a, a pretty cool looking ride, in my opinion. Um, and apparently it's it's one of the better uh, Mauer X cars, which I've never been a fan of the X car in general. But um, these are, are interesting looking. So let's actually go on... All right, let's see if Coaster Force has one for us, which they do. And this was, yeah, the extended coaster in uh, in RCT3. I gotta watch the whole ad. Up, 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 uh. Uber Eats, huh? Yeah, intimate. I'll, I'll post some of the uh, the model images. Uh, they actually had for G Force at um, uh, at uh, Drayton Manor. There was a little extended option for that too, which is like a pre-lift section, since that station is so high up that there was a whole little section of pre-lift before you actually got to the lift. All right, so you disengage the lift upside down, which is a little bit freaky with just the lap bar. Roll upright, roll back down, come all the way back down. Now go up into this pretty sizable corner here, level out, pretty strong airtime hill there. Another overbank corner here. Roll down and roll right into the station through it. Catch. And then the ride will lower you back down. <clears throat> Oh, you're right, QD. Formula X is a pretty fun X car. I did the, the clone of that in uh, Happy Valley Wuhan, and it was fun. Uh, incidentally, interesting that Happy Valley Wuhan has two X cars. They've got the Formula X clone, and they also have a Skyloop. So curious one there. Okay. So, the way that we're going to do this one is kind of start from the side here. And use a big half loop. The 
quarter loop will have a lift tilt on it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make this a little bit taller. The unfortunate thing is you can't you can't just change course with the quarter loop. I'd prefer to have the ability to have a little bit of a vertical here, uh, but there is no offset on that. So because of that, we are left with this. And if you want to see how to make one of these operational as far as um, <clears throat> oops. As far as hacking goes for the real, the regular one, um, I do have a tutorial for that. So check out my YouTube channel for that tutorial. All right, so now we're just going to try and do a sort of similar layout. And we put some good airtime in there at some point because that was one of the key features of the real one. Let's actually see what that could look like. It's going to be a little bit too far down because I, ideally I'd like to get beyond the lift hill here and then wrap it around like Abysmo does. But I don't think we can do that as easily without it looking a little funky. What we could do Maybe something in the reverse. is not awful I guess not awful is better than nothing let's uh, also go ahead and give ourselves the X car trains of which we're going to use a two car variety Crank up that lift hill speed just a little bit. Okay. Easy roll up and over. Okay. And then the, the real one actually just comes into the brakes now, uh, does that barrel roll and kind of turns around in. The question is, do we want to do that or do we want to do something else? Everyone's got sort of this 
weird thing here. And then this one is almost a... <clears throat> I mean, really, if you look at the, the thing, it's it's basically a cutback. But that looks a little stupid. A lot stupid. So we can get clear of now. <laughs> well, that's surprising that it runs into the. No. Okay. Then we can always do another twisted airtime hill because we've been loving those today. Get through the middle there. See what kind of airtime that has because that could be pretty spectacular. Oof. A little too much, maybe. Back in some heat. That will hopefully look a little bit better. Yeah, much better. And then they may be up. Cross them down. They're in the corner. The real one kind of cruises into the station on some brakes and then kind of drops down. I um, wonder if we can roll back into the station with the operating mode. Um, well, we can't because we have the lift till you have to shoestring that. Well, then I think that's what we're going to be dealing with. A lot of orange ones today. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. There's not much to this one. A little more interesting than your standard sky loop. Supports may be a little difficult depending on how wide it is on the your tower, especially because this one is passing on the adjacent tile. This is something to consider as far as those go. All right. So I think it's about time that uh, we look at the last one. We are coming back to the US for Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. This is one of the epitome of strange coasters. Um, a lot of rumors that it was meant to be B&M at one point, uh, a similar hyper coaster to Hollywood Dream, the ride over at Universal Studios Japan. Uh, there's a lot of just really interesting kind of stories and comments on this. Regardless, 
they had a lot of trouble with this ride having opened up they uh, had a lot of difficulties valleying uh or a lot of difficulties with valleying they still do they've had a lot of block challenges they've had a lot of train replacements they've had a lot of just like all sorts of, of you know interesting kind of crazy crazy stuff um but you remember visiting this when it was a kid when <laughs> you remember this open when you were a kid Ah, that makes me feel old. I was down here doing my first internships back when this opened. Um, but it's, uh, you know, I, I don't dislike the ride. Um, there's a ton of block breaks, yes, but it also, there's pretty good airtime up into and out of each of those block breaks. So I think that's a pretty nice feature. Um, we are maybe going to try and cheat some of these blocks with uh, chain lifts, just so that we don't have it fully slow down. Uh, that maybe an option and we'll uh we'll see what comes together uh this is kind of a difficult one to use uh, one of the cool things about this is that you can pick your own music on the ride so you have um a keypad on your uh vehicle uh, that will let you pick the, the stuff all right front cpo here we go uh, that will let you pick music for the the ride and so it's it's pretty cool in that regard. There's a certain couple of genres that you can pick from. There's also an entirely uh, populated secret songs list, if you know the process to get to those songs before the ride gets out of the station. So that's kind of cool. A pretty fast lift hill, too, this vertical lift. And you got an 80 degree first drop into this gigantic non-inverting loop. The ride does not go upside down. Pretty strong airtime up into block number one. Then we get into the inversion that they call the treble clef. It kind of looks like one from the side. Uh, actually, surprisingly intense. Like, I do gray out on this on occasion. Up into block number two, stacked under block number one. Then we've got this twisted airtime hill. You know, this high banked cruise over top of the queue line. Block break number three. Uh, this is one of my favorite bits of the ride. This little left, right, left down in this trench. And you've got this banked helix. Block number four. And then. There you go, back into the brakes. So interesting coaster. Um, you know, it's it is what it is. It's definitely a product of you know interesting site constrictions and just manufacturer constrictions. Uh, I can say for sure that Universal is not going to work with Mauer again. Um, but here we are. So let's uh, start our last one over here in the corner. Okay. The real ride has a moving station, which is pretty cool. Uh, that's a little bit tall. That's probably still a little bit tall. Well, let's see. The difficulty here is going to be getting this non-inverting loop to not look like a disaster, uh, which is easier said than done. But uh, Rumi did a nice job with his in... Uh, his recent design, or or cloud design, unfortunately. Um, right. Well,
That's not awful. Let's uh, oh, get our X car trains here and let's just see how it runs. The yeah, that that is one way to do it. Is you can almost do it with the, you do the half loop, then you do the barrel roll, and then the other barrel roll, and then the other half loop. Because in in actuality, the non inverting loops, well, excuse me, you know they do more or less go over. Uh, it's just this is a bit of a larger, taller one. It actually works pretty well as far as the overall speed goes, so I'm going to take that and run with it. Okay, we will call this our block number one. Trying not to totally scrub out all the speed from it. Just a little bit too slow at that point. Take this. Uh, bit of a, it's a bit of one of those cursed layouts, you could say. Hmm. I know I've done this before, and I'm trying to figure out what the best way to to do it is. You can you can put a little straightener piece in there, and then that will let you do. I don't know. I guess it won't. One point it did. Uh. Not to say that we have to necessarily do a clef inversion but it is kind of a cool element actually just a little bit slow over top of that which is interesting you don't want to be too slow on this one we'll call it that I think Get a little bit in there. Then we get a jump up for our second block, which ideally would be centered over top of this section here. Or next to it. 
And then next to it might be the better option. So what we can do actually is put that straight piece in there just to give us a little bit of uh, a little bit nicer element, a little bit more spread out. You can go ahead and pre-bank your next section if you want, or not, and then. Let's see, probably best to just go ahead and level this off and then get up to our lock break location. See if that's good enough or if we can go higher. Ideally, I kind of want to go here, but I'm guessing we won't be able to. Now, mass change could probably take care of that. I think we might. Let's Twister Coaster 1. So let's pull out for the first time today our. So this is 700 mass. So let's go ahead and do. Oh, not that. Rides list. Twister Coaster 1 is 15. Ride set mass, 0, 015. 1,000. Okay, so 0, 0,15. And I just, it, it's not going to take effect right now. I just need to do that for it to save. Or for it to save in the console so I can see it later. Mass change the ride. Okay. We're just going to try and build it now so that it more or less looks correct, and then we can adjust the mass and get whatever we need out of it there. I do like the way that the real thing threads its way through the main inversion there. We're going to do a couple more of these uh, double banked things. That'll let us get another lift hill in there. This one needs to get a lift hill. That way each of these are going to be dummy blocks. So it'll be, it'll be a real, <clears throat> you know, act like a real block. Um, but rather than having the block breaks, which are going to slow it down fully, we're going to have this instead. Okay, let's do my little favorite bit here. Uh, hmm. Do it like this. Okay. 
Okay. Five, so we can't get to 55 because that's going to be too tall. I think this should work on the diagonal also. Gives us diagonal breaks. We'll let us drop this by one. We'll go ahead and put that sort of outward banked <clears throat> hill in there, just like we started our first couple of ones today with. And then that will be our ride. another block here see if we can that uh, okay ideally we might want some more block space but let's find out no we do want some more block space it's fine no issues with that I feel like you you can't you can't do a Hollywood rocket without doing you know a crap ton of block sections. That's kind of, that's part of the allure of the ride. And what we'll do here too. Put our brakes on here. Let's open them up. That way it looks like a block. But it does not function like one. Okay. We're going to put a pretty fast lift hill on this. And I'm probably going to have to take out that mid-course block right there. But let's see what happens. Oh, shoot. I need to adjust the mass. All right. Let's... Do that first. Okay, ride set mass zero fifteen to a thousand. See how well these perform. It's been a long time since I've ridden this ride. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe a little bit quick, but not too, too bad. No block fault so far. About to have one, though. Yep, just barely. It's going to start stacking, though. Uh... Yep, there it is. Stack, stack, stack. Okay, we may be able to fix that. Get rid of that. All right, so man, so 15. Let's go 1100 just to give it a little bit more. Oomph. I don't I don't hate that non-inverting loop to be honest. I think it looks okay. It it looks okay from like one angle. It looks okay from this angle. This this one and this one not so much. The other one though. Uh, 
can always scrub a little bit of speed if we need, but this is actually about right as far as the, the real one goes, because usually they pass at the non-inverting loop, so that's okay. Question is, am I going to get caught up here? Because that's where I'm thinking I will, just based on this one, and it will hit. That's not what I want. Okay. Everything up till our end is fine. Let's try that. Of course, I don't think we're... We'll see if we can get back to 45. Let's give that a try then. You do have to reset your mass every single time, which is a bit of a pain, but all price to pay. Get these off of the ground in a trench of some kind. for over here this is definitely one of those layouts that needs some mass adjustment for it just because the the amount of length and blocks that you're going to get is just not conducive to how rct does their does their stuff so something to consider okay Gonna clear that. That's actually gonna work. So there we go. Five trains running in nice speed or nice uh, blocking there. Now, Hollywood Rocket has seven. It can run six without stacking. Although honestly, looking at this, we probably could. All right. Ignoring for the fact that there really should be a longer break run here for that. Let's see if we can run six without stacking. The This works well where they're going to pass pretty much right around the same spot. Okay, so we're clear here while he's halfway through the previous block. Got our somewhat unpleasant corners there, but not too bad. Okay. 
Okay, so not necessarily stacking per se. Now granted, the real one has a moving walkway station and multiple trains can post up between each other. But this one, the trains will not stop moving until they hit the station because we're doing, we're doing all right. And there's so many blocks that there's two trains per sitting in the final break run at the same time. Of course, if you put most operational teams on here, they'll be stacking like pancakes, but that's that's a problem for ops. I I don't dislike this. Um I think it works okay. The these this coaster never translates well into RCT, just just never. And I think part of that is the not inverting loop part of it is the the block breaks just don't want to get along and all those sorts of things but that's not half bad i would say enough that i will call it complete so there we have it so we have nine vertical lift hill coasters from today let's uh let's take a spin around just to kind of review again so uh, today we started with the Zamperla Thunderbolt Coaster, the long and narrow boy. Very long and very narrow. So this one's only like six tiles wide, I think, six or six or eight. Real fast over some of those inversions and everything, but uh, not, or over their time hills anyway. Not too bad overall. Then we moved over to this model of the Thunderbolt, which is in China. Uh, this is a slightly modified version of that. Uh, still has some of the same elements and everything. This sort of double inversion thing here, plus the loop, plus the zero G roll um, block in the middle, which does work because we slowed down the lift hill. Just clears in time. Over here, we got our uh, zero tower speed coaster based on impulse at Knobles. Um Honestly, this layout turned out really nicely. I think it may be the best layout of the... Um, Stream today. I think fits pretty well. Works its way around the lift hill and through the lift hill. The speed is about right without any kind of speed adjustment. With these small trains, it can be a little bit difficult. Alrighty, from there we went to the Eurofighters. The Eurofighter here we based off of Tantrum slash Iron Shark slash um, uh, Crater. So no uh, fully inclined loop here, but we do have two inversions. Um, the final helix is uh, cruising a little faster than it probably ought to be, but not, not too bad. I think it turned out okay. From there we went to the first of the Infinity Coasters. This is based on Pitt Special, a power park in Finland. Um, Non-inverting loop of some kind here also, a little bit cursed. Uh, with some airtime and just directional changes in general. Um, this is an odd layout in real life, and it's an odd layout in RCT. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily translate super well, but I don't think it looks bad either. Uh, I think it can act just fine. Uh, we got a little bit of our off-camber hill here. Um, we could also bank it the same way, which is sort of what the real thing does. A couple of airtime hills here at the end, so not too bad. Uh, from the break, we came back to Smiler here, which is our 15 inversion. Out of curiosity, let's see how these stats are. To be honest, that's not as bad as I expected. The intensity is not through the roof. Um, positive vertical Gs are a little hefty. Lateral Gs are real hefty. Negative Gs, holy cow, negative 1.3. Um, pretty good, though. Inversion's 14, so I guess I did count wrong, because I thought I had 15. Uh, my curiosity, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15. I do have 15, right? Am I missing something? Let's go in order of travel. 1, 2, 3, 4. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, I guess I am fourteen. So fourteen inversions. But runs four trains with ease. We get a little bit of uh, interaction there, which is pretty cool. 
Um, and that's always a nice thing to have. All right, then we moved over to the X cars. A pretty simple one here with uh, something similar to Abismo uh, at Parque de Atracciones uh, Madrid. Uh, not necessarily the best translating into RCT, but to be honest, none of the X cars do. Uh, as we go look at Hollywood Rocket here, which um, okay, uh, but I don't think it's necessarily the best translating. But you know, if you're trying to pump a bunch of peeps through the park. Uh, through a coaster then this might not be a bad option with six trains to deal from um, and one going out every couple of seconds here honestly it's probably can't load fast enough to get out right on time but not, not too bad so there is our nine for today elevator lift or vertical lift fill is not elevator maybe a topic for the future but um I got some good comments earlier too on the stream regarding uh, future topics also uh, as we head into our 18th video which will be the next one here coming up uh, it is getting increasingly difficult to find good topics on things so um, feel free to suggest future topics uh, to me in discord or wherever uh, on YouTube or whatever is best uh, because I am always open to those. I've got, you know, three or four ideas in play. Uh, really, the only thing that I say is I like to have a common theme, and I need to be able to get nine different coasters out of it. I like to have a variety if we can. But uh, if you enjoyed today, feel free to um, follow on this channel so you get the notifications when I go live. If you feel like subscribing, uh, it definitely helps out the channel, uh, and we do appreciate it. Um, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can do it for free, actually. So just uh, follow the, the prompts there on the screen to do it. Uh, also, my YouTube channel, uh, which is where I'm going to post the archive for this and all of my RCT reviews, hacking tutorials, and all sorts of other fun stuff. Um, that is over there on YouTube. There's a link in my um, profile down below. Uh, you can find it there. Please subscribe there because it definitely helps uh, boost the channel uh, overall so uh, certainly do appreciate it and uh, as always uh, we love having you guys here and uh, makes it uh, worth doing so until next time thank you guys very much for watching and have a good evening bye now